All right, so today I have two new sneaker pickups to share with you guys. Got a pair of Vans, got a pair of Jordans. And I haven't shown you guys either one of these, but I still wasn't planning on making this video. But I thought they'd be cool to share because I'm gonna rock one of these today. I don't really know which one yet. Maybe you can help me decide. But that's not really the point of this video. I'm showing these to you because, you know, both of these sneakers were pretty limited. And for the most part, they sold out. You can still get them right around retail in some spots. But the hype really wasn't there behind them. And I kind of want to talk about why that is a little bit and show you the shoes. I've got a pair of Jordan 1s. Obviously, you recognize this box. And then I've got a pair, don't fall out. <laughs> and then I've got a pair of Vans. These in particular, I haven't seen anyone on YouTube post this sneaker. So I'm gonna show that to you guys second. This shoe I've seen a few different reviews on and these sat around for a couple of days. They eventually sold out their collaboration, but the crazy hype really wasn't there and I kinda wanna talk about why that is and you guys can maybe give me a little bit of feedback. So let's check these out real quick. I unboxed these on my Instagram the other day so you may have already seen them, but we've got the Air Jordan 1 PSG, and big shout out to Jordan Brand. So these are a promo sample, and any shoe they send me is typically a promo sample. And I'm always looking at them to see if there's any differences between these and the retail versions. And the only difference that I've seen is that the retail version came unlaced. These were fully laced up when I got them. So that's really it. I guess I'd have to see a different version to compare the two, but I'm always wondering, and I'm just, I don't know why I'm telling you guys that, but uh, it's just something that I always look at. But it is the Paris Saint Germain collab. The entire upper is black and it's done in a neoprene. That is to represent the soccer jerseys for PSG. So this Jordan one in particular sat around for a few days and you can still get this shoe right around retail. And I kind of wonder why that is. It's a collaboration. It's got to be limited because not every store had it. Is this not a hype beast shoe because it's so simple and clean? That's really what I like about this sneaker. The collaborative side of it, that is cool. It adds to the story and whatnot, but it looks super clean. Like the Jordan 1 is definitely my favorite Jordan model and the way that they incorporated the subtle details on here while keeping this colorway very simple, like that's me. That is me in a nutshell. Most of my sneaker collection looks like this shoe and the next shoe that I'm about to show you. But is that the reason why these didn't sell out? Were most of the people that bought this shoe the people that want to wear these? We're not talking resellers, we're talking people like me and you that genuinely want to put this shoe on feet, rock it, because we think it's clean, we think it's a nice shoe. Is that the reason why these didn't sell out first day? Because they're not loud, they're not flashy, they don't have branding everywhere. That's a typical like hype beast reseller's dream shoe, right? Like these look so different than the off-white ones. I'd imagine there's probably more pairs of these than the off-white ones, but what if they were the same? What if they were the same amount of stock that they were selling and these are right next to one another? Hype beasts definitely see that off-white Jordan shoe as something that they can flip, make some money on, and on top of that, it's a crazy design. It's got off-white and Virgil attached to it. There's just a lot of hype connected to that shoe. And then these, simple and clean, and then people in the US might not care as much about soccer as people overseas do. So it's just interesting to think what goes into hype and what goes into sneakers that people actually want to wear. My theory is that these were bought by people that really wanted to wear them and that's kind of it. Resellers were not touching these because they probably looked at the shoe and were like, those are too boring to resell. Maybe that's it, who knows? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. You may completely disagree. But one thing I know for sure is that I really like this sneaker. The red and white hits on the midsole right there is different. You've never seen that on a pair of Jordan 1s before. So these may get thrown on feet, but this next pair also, oh, you know what? Jordan Brand also sent over something else from the PSG collection that is super nice. Check out this jacket. This is their flight knit jacket and it's kind of similar to like a fly knit. It's this heavy duty knit material that stretches like crazy and the quality on this 
is just insane. You know, you have to pay that hefty price tag. This was 275. So that should speak to the quality and craftsmanship that went into this jacket. And then they also sent over the pants to go with that jacket. So I'm gonna be rocking track suit vibes in this thing. I like how it's just black and white. Nothing crazy on it. You got the patches to know it's part of the PSG collection, and that's it. Moving on, let's get into this pair of Vans that I haven't seen anybody with. Literally not one video on YouTube have I seen, and I really haven't seen many people wearing these either. So these retailed at 65 bucks. At the time I was making this video, I found one place that had these online, so I'll link them down in the description if you want to grab a pair, but we've got the Vans Bold Nye. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's either any, nye, knee, not really sure. First up, let me know how many of you guys have actually seen these. There were a few blog posts, but other than that, really there hasn't been too much coverage about this sneaker. So these are actually a retro. They came out in the 90s, I believe, and now they're just re-releasing them. But I had never seen a pair of Vans quite like this one because it's totally different than the old school, the skate high, the era, and the authentic that we're used to. You don't really see a ton of new Vans models. It's mostly just new color ups. The Vans stripe logo is totally different on this sneaker. It's a completely different shape. It's wider and I thought it looked really clean. The closest model to this shoe would be the old school in my opinion, but once you get these in hand, you realize that these aren't those. The toe box is completely different. Like I said, the Vans logo and the stripe is different as well. You've got the Ultra Kush insoles that the Anaheim sneakers I've been showing you recently have, and they are more comfortable than the standard Vans sneaker. Tell me why Hype Beasts haven't gotten a hold of these yet. They are 65 bucks, so they're certainly affordable. Resellers can resell them. They were crazy limited. I'm telling you, these were hard to find. The one website that these are available on right now is the only website I know where you can grab these. So if you want a pair, definitely don't sleep. I couldn't even find them on eBay at the time I was looking. Maybe that changed, like StockX didn't have them. This was definitely a limited release. There's a blue colorway and there's also a black colorway. I chose the red because I just love red Vans. And uh, I don't know, I may go get the black pair if those are still available, but 65 bucks for these things, awesome. But maybe hype beasts don't like these because they're just regular Vans. They don't say fear God on the side, but they're not everywhere. This is still a limited release. Yes, I can be a hype beast. Maybe I'm part hype beast and I don't even know it, where I'm looking at stuff online and I'm like, oh, that's dope. That's really cool. Oh, that's limited. Like it's in me too, but I try to fight it. So how I approach buying sneakers and clothing is like, I look at it and I'm like, all right, am I gonna wear it? First and foremost, am I gonna wear it more than once? I gotta think about that, you know, cause sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't even care how many times I wear it, it's dope. Like, I need that, it's gonna sell out. But, you know, I try to like take a step back and be like, okay, what do I have that's gonna go with that? When am I gonna wear that? Which situation? So you kinda need to think about those type of things because there's plenty of sneakers I have that I've only worn a few times and I'm like, damn, I probably didn't need those for the price tag that I paid on them. We all make mistakes where we have stuff in our closet or sneakers sitting on our ground when we're like, damn, those aren't as cool now as they were when I bought them or I thought they were. So stuff like this, I know that I'm gonna be wearing red bands for a long time, like that's a fact. I know that I'm gonna be wearing Jordan 1s for like ever, honestly, forever. It really is never a bad investment for me to have a pair of Jordan 1s. And honestly, I'm probably talking too much in this video. I don't even know how long this is gonna be. But anyway, I'm gonna end it here. Make sure you hit the thumbs up on this one if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and let me know what you thought about the points I was making in this video. Did you grab a pair of these Jordan 1s. Are you picking up Jordan 1s to buy or to resell? Like it's okay if you flip sneakers, that's all good. Like make your money, it is what it is. But did you pick up a pair of these to wear or were you hoping that they would resell or did you already know like, no, nah, those are plain, no one's gonna pay resell for those. I'm leaving them on the shelf. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. If you want a pair of these Vans, they're linked down in the description. Subscribe if you're new, go check out some of my other videos and that is a wrap. I'll catch you next time, peace.